All right. Hey, everybody. This is Casey Altieri here with Turn Zero, and we're going to go ahead and get started in 30 to 45 seconds here. I know with a lot of people working from home right now and go to meeting and go to webinar a little bit busier than usual that they've been having a lot of issues with the volume. So we'll give a couple people a little extra time to, to join here and then we'll get started. All right. So for today, I am going to be taking you through a a rundown on customer journeys. I'm going to be doing it in a couple of different ways. But for those of you who don't know me, which based on what I saw on the attendee list is is almost everybody. My name is Casey Altieri, and I am the director of sales at Churn Zero. You can see me and my headshot. It looks like it was in the summertime, so I was nice and tan at that point in the, the right-hand corner here. But what I plan to cover today is going to be all around the customer lifecycle and customer journey. So during my time here at Turn Zero, I've had the, the pleasure to talk with lots of different companies and leaders in the customer success space. And what I found interesting was whenever people come to Turn Zero and are looking for a, a demo of the Turn Zero product, everybody's first instinct is that the reason that they're coming is to reduce churn. And that's obviously something that's important for everybody in customer success. And that's definitely something that's important to the people that we talk to. But what seems to be the most important thing and what CS leaders are most interested in doing is developing the processes so that their team can scale effectively and efficiently. And the reality with this all is, is the best way to do that is to have a clear and defined customer journey. So for today, what I plan on covering is going to be what journeys are, which I'm sure almost everybody on this call already knows, uh, how we're doing this today, how we create them, and what journeys should really tell us in the long run. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with what are journeys. And I don't think I'm telling anybody anything new whenever I tell you what a customer journey is. And of course, you can read that, but just to, to put it incredibly simply, a customer journey is taking a customer from point A to point B. And taking that a step further, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're taking that customer from point A to point B in a manner that is both, both effective for the customer and efficient for your team. So obviously in an ideal world, we'd be able to have unlimited time to spend with every single one of our customers and that would make it easy for us to get them up and running because we're giving them the highest level of white glove treatment all the way through. But seeing as that is not realistic in most scenarios, what we need to do is we need to figure out where that balancing point between high touch interaction, automation, and everything else is going to be so that as we're working them through the customer lifecycle, it is still effective for the customer. In addition to that, what we really want to focus on with customer journeys as well is making sure that they are repeatable for the different segments that we have. So oftentimes when we're thinking about the customer journey, I think the most relatable scenario for everybody out there is looking at chain type restaurants. So if you look at a Chipotle or a McDonald's even, or whatever it may be, one of the values that they offer is that whenever you walk into their restaurants, if you want to call McDonald's a restaurant, wherever it is, whether it's in Denver, Boston, Miami, wherever you go, you know that if you're walking into a Chipotle, you're going to end up with the same tasting burrito as you're going to end up with in Denver. And this is what we really want our customers to feel like whenever they are entering our journeys as well. We want to make sure that we're giving them that consistent level of service across the board for everybody in that segment. So to go ahead and get started, we're going to start this thing with a, a little bit of a poll. I'd like to, to see we have about 50 or so people in here. Do we have the, the customer journey uh, mapped for the entire customer lifecycle? And I believe in the poll response here, we actually have three options. I, I threw in partially because I realized that the entire customer lifecycle, there's a little bit of a gap between yes and no. So if you can go ahead and jump in there and give me a, a look into where you stand for this, that would be very helpful. And as we're looking at this, we're at about 
65, 67, 70% or so of the attendees have responded to this. And what we can see here is that whenever we're looking at mapping the entire customer journey, only less than actually 10% of the people on this line have mapped the entire customer journey. A majority of the people have marched, excuse me, have done a part of this. And that, that's kind of what I was expected as well. A lot of teams do a really good job with onboarding or renewals, but whenever it comes to the rest of the process, that can oftentimes just disappear. So with that, let's move into the second piece of this, where if of those people with defined customer journeys, whether that just be partially so or all the way through, where are you managing those? Is that currently in a CRM? Is it in spreadsheets? Is it in a customer success platform? What does that look like for you all? And we'll give everybody a couple seconds to vote here. And as we're, we're cruising through this, we're at about 60% of the, the people on here voting already. It looks like, and it actually kind of looks exactly like what I expected. Around 50% of the people are managing this directly through a CRM right now. About 30% are doing it through spreadsheets, and another 20 to 25% are doing this through a customer success platform. We're going to discuss in just a little while the merits of all of these. So as we move forward here, the, the next piece of this is going to be all around what do customer journeys mean to you? We've already seen now what a journey is. We've seen that most people are doing them in some way, whether it's partial or all the way through the entire customer lifecycle. Well, what, what is the reason that we're doing these journeys? And I'm, I'm likely not telling you anything new here, but the, the value of journeys is so wide reaching for your customer organization. So the, the number one thing whenever we think about a journey is that we can help accelerate time to value. And of course, that's something that's going to be important in the onboarding world. We can also define processes for your team and to kind of point two and four are going to be important here where we're going to define processes for your team and we're going to be able to rapidly onboard new team members because we're taking out a lot of the guesswork here. Whenever a new customer comes on board and you have a new CSM, they're going to know exactly the steps that they need to take in order to successfully move them through, through the process. We're also going to create re repeatable customer experiences. And of course, this one that's bold here is going to be reducing churn. So prior to this call, and actually over the course of the past three and a half years, I've done a lot of research myself into what are the main reasons for churn among SaaS companies. And what I thought was interesting is what I found to be true across a variety of different research studies, and I'm going to use Chargeify's research on B2B SaaS companies here, was that the three biggest reasons for customer churn are as follows. Number one, bad onboarding. And of course, we're going to be able to affect that for the customer journey. Number two, no ongoing customer success. So a lot of what we're seeing here is that most people have partially defined that customer journey. So they've probably handled the bad onboarding part, but they're not handling the, the second reason for churn, which is no ongoing customer success. And then number three is actually bad support. And while I know a lot of customer success and customer support teams are working towards the same goal, they're, they're working kind of tangentially rather than completely together. So this is all things that actually having a strong customer journey can impact. And if we can knock off those top three, then we, we're really getting into some success as it relates to reducing churn. And you can see my little clip art down here for the fact that oh, this is not magic. We don't have to pull a, a rabbit out of the hat to do any of this. This is a process that's going to be created, perfected, and then have enormous impact on the company as a whole. So let's look at this as to how do we create successful and impactful customer journeys. And again, I'm probably not telling you all anything that you don't already know. I just want to reiterate this before we get into what it's going to look like in turn zero and perhaps even in your spreadsheets and so forth. So the first piece that we need to do is we need to segment our customers. We all know, unfortunately, that we can't give the same level of success to a customer who's spending $100,000 as somebody who's spending $1,000 a year. So what we need to do as an organization is we need to start by defining where those breaking points are. So where are we going to give the white glove service to? Where's the mid touch? Where's the low touch? And getting those definitions and then taking a step further and really evaluating the types of customers that we have and deciding, are there any other 
segments that are going to be impactful here? Should we be treating our verticals different as it relates to the, the ongoing journey? Should we be treating different product lines different? And we really want to make sure that we have this all broken down so that whenever we are giving these customers the experience that they need, it's going to be quite simple and seamless on both sides. The second piece of this is start small. And it seems like most everybody has done this by starting with a partial portion of the, the customer journey. The, the reason that we wanna start small is because this is all gonna snowball. As soon as you start with a single segment or even a single subset of that segment, you're going to be able to start rolling into everything else. So we don't need to boil the ocean here. We can really start with a portion, see the success there and then move forward. But the key thing we wanna make sure is that we don't have perfection be the enemy of progress. The, the most important thing that we can do is start rolling this out once we see some immediate successes. And rather than just saying, all right, I need my onboarding to be perfect before I get into the adoption journey and the renewal journey and so forth, we really need to think about this on a, a global perspective. Beyond that, and this is something that I think is actually quite important, is we need to define success. So many customer success teams that we talk to at Turn Zero define success on one side. So we're looking at it and saying, success for this onboarding is if we've met with a customer three times, we have completed the configuration worksheet, and we've done A, B, and C. And frankly, that, that's great, but it's really missing the overall importance of what this customer journey is designed to do. We're not just creating these customer journeys for our own sanity. It's meant to drive customer results. So we need to make sure that success for us is driven by what it is that the customer is doing. So it could be as simple as in the first 30 days, we expect 50% license utilization. We expect them to start using our sticky features and log into the platform, whatever it may be, but define success from the customer's perspective rather from your own. And then lastly, we need to make it simple for our team. And this is gonna be something that's incredibly important and I'm relatively biased to, but it's, Spreadsheets are not ever simple for your team. As somebody who has operated out of spreadsheets for a lot of my life, one of the, the difficulties with them is that there's no checks and balances with them. It's that you have seven, 10, 15 different spreadsheets up at any time, and you have no idea what's going on. Things are going to slip through the cracks. So that's not making it simple for your team. It needs to be better than that. Then on the other hand, doing it in a CRM is good and definitely better than spreadsheets. But the reality with CRMs is that they are developed for sales team. And that's what they're optimized for. Whenever we're looking at this, it's truly a sales tool for the most part, whenever we're thinking about CRMs. So if you have an amazing Salesforce engineer or whatever it may be, sure, they're going to be able to create a few of the, the different reports that you have, but it's not going to be able to give you that holistic and seamless view that they need. And this is really where customer success softwares are going to come in and they're going to be able to help you with that. So with that said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how Turn Zero handles this scenario and how we're helping teams of all different sizes and different customer types with creating their customer journey. Now, I think it's rather intuitive for everybody on this call how the customer journey would work for, for certain segments of customers. So for your, your typical mid-market customer, it's obvious how we want to create that, that customer journey. But whenever it comes to the extremes, what we find a lot of times is that people don't think customer journeys are really going to work for them. So this is a, a scenario where we see quite frequently is we're talking to companies who are incredibly low touch. And they'll say something like, hey, we have too many customers for a typical customer journey to be possible for what it is that we do. And I would say in a traditional sense, that's probably correct. Because if you're managing it out of spreadsheets or out of a CRM, then it's going to be absolutely impossible for you all to handle your tech touch customers through a journey. But what we do here at Turn Zero that's going to be a little bit different is we focus on a different piece of it. So we're not just looking at what you have to do. We're looking at what the customer needs to achieve. So whenever we think about the customer journey for a, a, a company that is a little bit more low touch and not giving us as much money, it's going to all be around okay, are they in the first 20 days logging into the platform? Are they doing the things that we expect? And if they're not, how are we driving those actions? And we have tons of companies who have thousands of customers per CSM that are using the, the turn zero customer journeys to drive the customers to the outcomes that they would like to, for them to have. And they have significantly impacted the retention rate simply by doing this. So with that, let me go ahead and jump into turn zero here actually, and I can show you exactly how this works. So I just pause my screen. I'm gonna reshare it now in a 
assuming everything is working, which I'm hoping it is, you should be able to look at what we're on right now, which is actually the Turn Zero page. And usually by this point in a product demo, I've taken you through all of the other aspects of Turn Zero, and we kind of wrap it up with a journey. But for the sake of this conversation, obviously we're gonna jump right in here. So I'm gonna start with a journey that I actually just created minutes ago, just to show you how simple this is to create and how powerful it's gonna be for your team. So in this case, we are focused on onboarding SMB customers. And the first thing that we wanna do here is we wanna define how long this process should take. In this case, this is a 90 day onboarding process. So frankly, it's probably pretty long for SMB customers, but this is just an example to show you how this works. So with intern zero, what we're gonna focus on is we're gonna focus on making sure that we're defining short-term goals all the way through here. This is really where we're changing the thought process for everything that we do. And as we, we click into any one of these short-term goals or what we call milestones, we're gonna see two different things. So one is gonna be a task. And a task would be something that's assigned to your team. So anybody in your organization, whether they're in customer success, sales support, is gonna know exactly what they have to do. In this case, it's a simple welcome email going out. It's gonna come from a, a specific user and likely this is gonna go out automatically. But the key piece that we wanna focus on here is going to be the second piece, which is we need to be tracking the achievement. So what we're looking for here is in those first five days, is the customer doing everything that I expect them to do? So are they logging into the platform? Are they watching the new customer webinar and so forth? And if they're not doing these things, then we're gonna be having automated messages firing off at them to make sure that we're reaching the outcomes that we had hoped they would achieve. So the concept here is, that we are driving all of this through the, the Turn Zero platform to say, okay, we're still defining the, the customer journey, even though we're a little bit more low touch. Now, the next piece beyond this is going to be looking at it from, again, a little bit more of the opposite perspective, which is, we hear this all the time as well, my customers are too unique. My customers are too high touch for us to be able to create a repeatable customer journey. And to that, we come back and say, okay, that, that's totally fair. Let's learn a, a little bit about your customers. And frequently what we find out is that their customers are quite unique, but it's not the whole process that's unique. It's just maybe 80% of it's repeatable and then 20% of it is unique. So what we still do within Turn Zero is we are gonna help you create the framework and the processes for your teams. And this is exactly what we wanna do is because we wanna make this simple for every CSM. So if we are creating the framework, then what we're doing here is we are giving each and every, and I'm gonna go into a specific example here, now for more of an enterprise account, what we're doing is we're giving each and every CSM the knowledge as to what it is that they have to do, and then the ability to take it a step further and come in here and they can add on custom tasks. They can add on custom achievements to make sure that what it is that they're creating is going to be unique to each one of those customers. So for those high touch models, we can make this as unique as possible. And taking that a step further, what we found for a lot of these high touch teams is, and frankly, this is relevant for mid touch and low touch as well, but specifically for those high touch teams is we definitely wanna hold accountability on both sides. So a lot of times what we see our customers doing is sharing this journey with the customer as well. So this is something where we're gonna be able to actually externally share this directly with the customer. We're on a welcome call, we say, hey, Coca-Cola, hey Disney, hey whoever our customer is, here's what you can expect from us over the next 30 days, here's what we're gonna expect from you. And that way you're gonna be able to hold each other accountable all the way through the process and we can show them all of the good work that we're doing on our side and what we expect from them. And this is incredibly powerful for developing customer journeys and customer relationships all the way throughout the process. Now, of course, there is that, that third model, which is gonna be a little bit more mid-touch, which is gonna be somewhere in between these two that I just mentioned. But my, my point for showing this is that it's truly going to be possible for you to create these processes for every single segment that you have. And then we want it to be going all the way throughout the process. Sure, we've completed onboarding. Well, what's that next stage look like where we're in adoption? What's the next stage look like where we are moving into their first renewal or whatever it may be, we can create these and let our teams know exactly what they need to be doing. So with that said, what we've talked a lot about why we should be doing journeys and, and what kind of value we're gonna be getting from them. But even in addition to that, we also wanna think about this from the organization wide perspective. And that's gonna be what kind of insights can I gain as a VP of customer success 
from these journeys. So we know, of course, that we're going to be increasing time to value or advancing time to value. We know we're going to be reducing term. We know we're going to be doing all these other things, but that it doesn't end there. So with creating the customer journey, you all are going to be able to identify bottlenecks. You're going to be able to see in the process visibly, okay, our issue here appears to be in week two, step two, where the customer is expected to do this. I need to go back to our product team and let them know that they're running into an issue here and you're gonna be able to have that data that's gonna allow you to go back to the product team. Or the issue is with the way that we're positioning this on the customer success team. So we're identifying those bottlenecks and that's gonna help speed up the process where we've had several teams that are using the Turn Zero platform and I've talked to teams elsewhere who have developed this even in a little bit more of a manual way who are able to speed up their implementation process by north of 50% simply by, by being able to define the processes and then identify those bottlenecks. Beyond that, I think a lot of what plagues customer success teams in general is a difficulty with being able to track numbers against what is going on. So if you all have an onboarding team, how successful is each individual within that onboarding team at reaching their goals? And you all are gonna be able to identify the exact areas where each CSM struggles and you're gonna be able to coach them up on that. And then lastly, you can tie these journeys back into customer health scores as well. So what we know and what we saw in the beginning is that three, the three biggest reasons for why SaaS companies are not renewing with their, uh, the products that they're using, or I should say why B2B companies aren't renewing with SaaS products, is one, bad onboarding. So that's something that, that we can fix directly here. Two, lack of ongoing customer success. And then three, bad support. Well, through this process, we're going to be able to see how did they move through that customer onboarding? Were they moving through on track or were they behind or were they stuck? Did we in fact engage with them throughout the whole process? And all of that needs to tie back into customer health. So with that said, I know we had about 20 minutes and I ran a little bit over here. What I was really hoping to show you is just that importance of, of customer, excuse me, of the importance of creating the customer life cycle and also uh, the overall value that you can get as it relates to building this out for the team itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. If there are any questions, please go ahead and, and jump in at any point and type it into the questions tab. I'm just scrolling through here. It looks like somebody may have jumped in in the middle. And for everybody who, who missed anything, we will be sending this out uh, afterwards so that you can make sure that you have everything on here. We're also going to be sending out a PDF version of the PowerPoint that I went through. All right. So just looking at this, it looks like we are, we are good to go as it relates to questions. If you all have any questions or comments, my, my information is going to be in the uh, email that goes out after this. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions. And uh, of course, stay safe during this, this hectic time. And if, if you need anything from me, we're always available. 